Netflix will soon begin its password sharing crackdown. If you are sharing a Netflix password with someone, be prepared to start paying for it. Netflix accidentally posted a draft of its new plans to crack down on password sharing and it's sparking major outrage. Netflix announcing new details on its plan to crack down on password sharing. Remember when Netflix was the cool kid on the block, the one who let you share their password as casually as a stick of gum? Well, those days are gone. It's 2023 and Netflix has grown into becoming that annoying middle-aged neighbor that's past their prime and insists on enforcing the HOA rules to the letter in an effort to feel some semblance of power. It's time to explore the streaming giant's decision to crack down on password sharing and how it impacts everything from their bottom line to your dinner table conversations. Netflix, once the cool, carefree cousin of streaming services, took a sharp turn from its love is sharing a password tweet in 2017 to a more uptight, penny-pinching persona. In 2021, Netflix announced its plan to tackle password shares, much to the chagrin of users who'd grown accustomed to mooching off their friends' and family's accounts. It's like Netflix suddenly became the dad who won't let you borrow the car keys anymore. After 2022 was the first quarter in over a decade that Netflix saw a decline in subscribers, the company blamed password sharing. They unsurprisingly elected to crack down on the practice, seen as over 100 million people worldwide apparently treat Netflix accounts like a potluck dish. But honestly, can you blame them? Netflix's Q2 2022 shareholder letter read like a breakup letter with password sharing, admitting that they needed to grow revenue faster and as a result will be putting an end to sharing by March 2023. To sniff out password sharing culprits, Netflix has started monitoring IP addresses, device identifications, and account activity, essentially stalking its users like an overbearing, jealous partner. Their help section for Latin American countries even explained that anyone outside the registered address would be automatically blocked, like an overly protective parent locking the doors after curfew. The company introduced additional fees for extra members outside the registered address, which, let's be real, was basically the streaming version of a swear jar. To add insult to injury, Netflix also launched a lower cost package with ads, a move as shocking as finding out your favorite all-you-can-eat buffet started charging for extra plates. The ad-supported tier available in 12 countries was a far cry from their original commercial-free promise. Netflix claimed it was pleased with the early results from the service, but didn't divulge the number of subscribers who signed up for this new tier. It's like they invited everyone to a fancy party only to reveal it's a potluck and you're expected to bring your own chair. Let's start with how Netflix tried this out first in Latin America. Well, Netflix's stock plummeted last year after revealing that they had a declining subscriber base. This led to 300 employees getting the boot. To combat the issue, the company decided to test a password sharing ban trial in Latin America, subjecting those in Argentina, Peru, Chile, and a few other nearby countries to an early version of the ban. That trial didn't go as planned. Implemented in various countries over the course of 2022, the trial period was ended in October after backlash from consumers. The trial effectively amounted to consumers being forced to add a home for an additional charge rather than adding an extra member, the latter of which provides flexibility for consumers. The company didn't officially say whether they lost subscribers as a result of the trial, but it can be reasonably assumed that the results weren't great given they canceled the attempt and changed their approach. Nevertheless, they forged ahead. In a move as dramatic as some of their original content, Reed Hastings, the CEO and co-founder of Netflix, decided to step down in January amid the attempt to implement the sharing ban. He handed over the reins to his co-CEO, Ted Sarandos, and COO, Greg Peters. They both probably feel like they've inherited a flaming dumpster fire of password sharing controversies and subscriber losses. Hastings, though, seems pretty chill about the whole thing, saying he's been delegating management to Sarandos and Peters for the last two and a half years. In a statement, he praised them for dealing with the challenges of the pandemic and upheavals in the streaming industry, which is kind of like complimenting someone for successfully juggling chainsaws while riding a unicycle. Still, Hastings plans to stick around as executive chairman for many years to come. Because who wouldn't want a front row seat to this wild roller coaster ride? With a personal fortune of $3.3 billion, it's not like he needs the popcorn money. In February, Netflix moved forward with its plan to ban password sharing, implementing the ban in New Zealand, Portugal, Spain, and unfortunately, here in Canada as well. Well, we want to believe that the changes have harmed the company and forced them to reverse course, that's not exactly what is happening. Instead, the company has said that it's pleased with the results, strengthening our confidence that we have the right approach. What Netflix claims is happening is that there is a cancel reaction in each market in which password sharing is blocked, impacting near-term member growth. 
However, after a period of time, password borrowers start to activate their own accounts and existing members add extra member accounts, resulting in increased member acquisitions and revenue. The company specifically calls out the Great White North for this, stating that the membership base is larger now than it was prior to the launch of paid sharing, with revenue growth accelerating past growth rates in the US. But it's not all honky-dory. Research group Kantar has estimated that in Spain, over 1 million users have left the service due to the crackdown. And sure, about 650,000 of them were freeloaders, but as Dominic Sanubo from Kantar's World Panel Division pointed out, the drop could limit the benefits of word of mouth promotion. Subscription cancellations in Spain reportedly tripled during the quarter compared to the same period a year earlier. And roughly 10% of subscribers in Spain claim they will be canceling the service in the second quarter. A strong barometer of the overall performance may lie in one simple fact. Netflix has delayed its rollout of the sharing ban in its largest market, the United States. Originally set to be placed into action in March, the ban is now set to be rolled out in the second quarter, blaming the delay on improvement opportunities. Whatever that means, you either ban password sharing or you don't. For what it's worth, however, Netflix is currently guiding to Q2 paid ads that are roughly similar to the first quarter editions of 1.75 million subscribers. Let's explore some of the reactions on social media. Tracy Kent is upset she can't watch Netflix while traveling and that her son in university has lost access. A Yahoo poll shows that 62% of users say they will stop using Netflix once the ban comes into effect. Many people on Twitter are sharing the hashtag, hashtag cancel Netflix. Anthony Tuhi thinks this is a disaster for those who travel a lot. Pearlmania500 on TikTok rants that this could be the beginning of people starting to take up political activism out of complete anger and boredom. Do these morons on Wall Street, these dudes who all they do is write financial statements for fucking shareholders not understand bread and fucking circuses? Do they not understand bread and circuses? You know, the only thing that keeps people from realizing how everything's going to fucking shit right now is the fact that they can turn on their TV at home and watch something to distract them while they shovel fucking high fructose corn syrup into their fucking faces. Once the high fructose corn syrup is too fucking expensive to buy and you can't turn on your fucking TV and watch shit, you know what happens when people start doing? They start looking for other ways to fucking pass their time. Maybe they start fucking clicking on hyperlinks on Wikipedia. Falcon Round Driver suggests this could be a blockbuster moment for Netflix. Netflix is about to go through its blockbuster moment and somebody has to take their place. <laughs> Jordan the Stallion is so angry he's ready to go back to DVD. I'm not, at this point I think I'm just gonna buy regular DVDs, it might just be better. It's tough to say whether Netflix's decision to crack down on password sharing will ultimately pay off or becoming the streaming equivalent of jumping the shark. But one thing's for sure, Netflix is no longer the laid back carefree service we once knew and loved. And as they continue to play whack-a-mole with password sharers and alienate subscribers, it'll be interesting to see how they'll fare in the ever-changing landscape of entertainment. Part of the reason that we subscribe to things is because people around us are constantly talking about them and we want to be a part of that conversation. I can't help but wonder how much the decision to eliminate password sharing will impact various Netflix content and how much people regularly discuss whatever shows they have upcoming. Now, although those dirty freeloaders are no longer going to be watching your content, they're also not gonna be discussing it down at the local hockey rink, the local pub, or wherever you just have regular conversations with other adults. This whole thing reminds me a lot of Microsoft Office back in the 90s and early 2000s, when everybody had pirated copies of Microsoft Office. Microsoft understood that those freeloaders were all a part of the ecosystem that they needed everybody to use in order to make it so that enterprise clients and individuals who were okay with paying for Microsoft Office would actually pay for it and use it. Now, I can't help but wonder how much Netflix is going to actually take a hit because they are a standalone platform. They're not like Apple Plus or Amazon Prime where it's part of a, a, a larger platform. Netflix is its own thing. They have to create great content if they ultimately want to survive, at least at, in their current form. And by eliminating a ton of quote unquote freeloaders, it's definitely going to have an impact on how much they are a part of the everyday dinner table conversation because less people are just going to have access to their programming. Is this just a simple revenue optimization decision or is it the beginning of the end of Netflix being the dominant streaming platform? I guess we're going to find out. 
Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. Also, do me a big favor. Please hit that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I love you all.